Okay. Hello and happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. I'm uh, here making another video through the Holy Spirit, and this is going to be a message that I pray that is going to be extremely difficult for people to even grasp or believe or think that it's possible. And unfortunately, that is because so many of us have been deceived and not realizing that um, as we follow our walk with Christ and with God, there are things that are going to be revealed to us that no one will really want to face. And one of these things that has been revealed to me is, is definitely something that is a strong message. It's a message that people will find unbelievable. And that's one of the things that happened in the many days of the prophets and the disciples that what they taught and what they preached about, many people didn't believe it just because it just seemed like it was impossible or it wasn't real or, or, or it didn't really exist or they were speaking lies and that it was not the truth. But just to make sure that you know I'm, I'm speaking from the word, I'm not going to just, these are not just mine. I'm going to first start with reading 2 Thessalonians 3. And this will put my entire uh, message into context as to why you can expect a massive destructive force of the Lord coming because of those that have had deception in their lives and not haven't been awakened and unfortunately it's nearly 9% or more of our world is still asleep and part of it has to do with the fact that Satan has done just a great job of deceiving humanity that now, whenever anybody tells you that something isn't what you think it is, we don't want to say, we'll say, well, that's not, that's not true. There's no way. That's not possible. But that's exactly how it works. Um, when you've been raised in a system and in a mindset that has been around for thousands of years, that has become so honed and so uh, so well done it's hard to break out of it and not, and not see the reality and this will explain to you why Christ lived the way he did or why he didn't go along with the crowd or he didn't just agree with what everybody was saying and why he stood alone in many ways because he understood exactly what I'm about to talk about so again it says in 2 Thessalonians 3 let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, that the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who exposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when, it, when I was still with you, I told you these things? And you know what is restraining him now, so that he may reveal in his time. And you know, and you know what is restraining him now, so that he may reveal in his time. For well, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Now, when they're talking, when when in Second Thessalonians, when they're talking about, when the Bible's talking about that lawlessness is already at work, people don't realize that that actually started in the Garden of Eden and of course the Jews say guarded on where the Satan came and deceived uh, Adam and Eve I call him Grandpa Adam Grandma Eve because if you want to truly believe in the Bible that we are descendant of them they are everybody's grandparents and the great deceiver if you look at our world today, has accomplished that very feat in the fact that 
many of humanity doesn't acknowledge it and that's what jesus christ came to fulfill when when adam when grandpa adam and grandma Eve fell was to bring them back to righteousness because now satan had control of the death that's you know and that's why so many people stumbled and fell before christ came because they didn't know the alternative, they didn't know the, the whole truth, they didn't know, and that's why God had to do some of the things he had to do, because they were, like you said, they were people who had did not have knowledge, and so therefore, they had to be given things a certain way, or they would not follow God, because he knew they didn't have enough um, strength to endure what Christ was going to endure. Um... The reason being that I'm doing this is because we are in the days of Noah. And one of the things that happens with the days of Noah is the deception of who rules. If you recall, the only individual that God even interacted with when the, before the flood came was Noah. He didn't talk to any of the descendants of Cain, and there's a reason for that. Because when God had cursed Cain after he killed Abel, he had considered his entire bloodline to be uh, dead. That they were not of, of any uh, value to him at that point because of what took place. Remember the sins of the father. And so, uh, generations, and, and there were billions of them, but people don't realize there were billion pe billions of people before the flood that didn't even know God, that never knew God at all because they were descendants of Cain. And one of the things that continues to be misconstrued by every civilization, even up to the United States even, and we're seeing that now, is the deceiver has a soul um, blinded that s people can't even see that what they do and what they say every day is actually going in the wrong direction and not going in the right direction. First of all, I want to say, you know, I appreciate every person that has ever sacrificed their life for freedom in this country. And I know that they have done it willingly and they have done it without, without any um, hesitation. The sad part about that, though, is the hidden agenda of what our military has been fighting for that so many people don't even know. If you recall when job when Jesus was tempted by Satan, he brought him up on the mountain and said, I will give you all of these kingdoms if you bow down before me and worship me. Here's what people don't realize when he said that. When you look at all the kingdoms from the time of Noah to the time of when Jesus arrived, there was only one kingdom on the planet that God even acknowledged was his, and that was Judea, that was Israel, that was it. Now stop and think about that and put it into perspective. That means that all the systems of government that were around Israel we're not gods. Well, then who were they? Well, if you go according to scripture, every human being was a descendant of Noah after the flood. Just like every grandpa, grandpa Noah. Sorry, you need to call him by his correct name. By Grandpa Noah. Every human being on this planet was conceived through Grandpa Adam and Grandma Eve. And down to Grandpa Noah. The one thing that so many people are blinded by is how Satan has allowed himself to manipulate people not to understand 
that the connection is back to those people, that we are them, they are us. And that is why Christ came and died on the cross is to prove that point, that God is God created this world. He is the almighty. Jesus is his son, okay, who died on the cross for our sins because of the fact that we were committing so many sins because of the fact that we lost our way in understanding that we're all one and the same. So when you look at even our country, the United States, you look at China, you look at Japan, you look at North Korea, you look at South Korea, you look at Iran, you look at France, all Germany, all these other countries, Russia, all these other countries, they're basically doing the exact same thing before the days of Noah. Fighting each other for one individual who has deceived so many of who he really is. And now that he's out of hell and he's been, you know, causing a lot of demonic increases, he's been uh, causing a lot of um, sorrow, like it says in Daniel. Uh, the knowledge has increased, you know, and I'll get to that here in a minute, what I'm talking about when I say that. You know, people always say, well, well, God did this, God did that, God God knows this. I said, you have to understand something. God has knowledge. Indeed, he does. And he does cause certain things to happen because nothing happened on his planet with all his say-so. But one of the things that people fail to realize is that we do things with God's knowledge without his wisdom. And there's a difference with that. God has the knowledge, like I always told my father, and we used to argue this case all the time. God always had the knowledge to create a car. God always had the knowledge to create airplanes. God always had the knowledge to create super ships. God had the knowledge to create guns. God had the knowledge to create all these things. But what we lack in humanity is the wisdom. For example, um, if you, for those of you who remember the movie Jurassic Park, and the actor Jeff Goldblum who played Ian Malcolm made the comment, yeah, all you worry about is that the tough thought is that you could, but you didn't stop to think that you should. That is humanity's issue when we're dealing with Satan. Satan will show us all the things that we can do, that we can create, that we can do. But with God, he says, should you do that? And that's where the deceiver has deceived so many for thousands of years. Because even though we want to, you know, when we worship these other gods and we worship all these other different beings and we've uh, put people on pedestals and we've, and we've created a, a world of chaos, you know, we don't stop and think of the fact that, yeah, we did all of these things. Oh, yeah, we achieved this. We achieved that. Humanity's done so many great things. We have done so many stupendous feats. We've broken barriers. We've done this. We've done that. Yeah, we did all of that. But God's looking at us like, well, yeah, you did it. But should you have done that? Did you ever see my son come down there and do any of those things that you guys are doing to this to this planet? Did you ever see my son come down there and, and, and tell you that those things were okay? Did you ever see, what was the whole purpose of my son's visit? But yet, so many people in our societies today fail to realize that all these things that we've accomplished in God's eyes mean nothing. He doesn't care that we build F-16s. All he cares about is what they do. He doesn't care that we created skyscrapers. All he cares about is what happens inside of those skyscrapers that bothers him. He doesn't care that we've achieved flight. Okay? He said, I never put wings on you in the first place. Isn't that what I had angels for? And I'll get to that here in a minute. What, what's, what's going on there? Um, you know, when you look at Jesus Christ, 
And you say Jesus Christ is God because he's the son. Well, that means just like Christ, just like God said in the scripture, I knew you before you were even born. He knew who all the astronauts were going to be. He knew who all the pilots were going to be. He knew who all the presidents were going to be. He knew who all the politicians were going to be. He knew who all the kings were going to be. He knew everything. All of that stuff was already known. But he had to fulfill his, 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 his promise. And that's where Satan has used it against us as, as human beings. Now, one of the things that you're going to acknowledge, that I'm going to acknowledge, and this is where, you know, everybody keeps getting this mystery thing about, well, who's Babylon the Great, mystery Babylon, blah, 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 and the end days and all that. And all. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you some insight into who I'm verifying is Babylon the Great. Because this mystery Babylon acts exactly like not the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar that everybody wants to compare it to, but the Babylon of Nimrod. Nimrod's Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon are two different things. Because if you understand Nimrod's Babylon, there's some very <laughs> some higher similarities to many of you that are going to see when I get into who that what that nation compares themselves to. Now, why am I doing this? People will say, well, people might get mad, they might kill you, they might not like that, they might like have what you want to say. Well, let's stop and think about it. Did anybody really like what Jesus Christ had to say when he was here? No. They were just happy to see that he could heal people. He could uh, do miracles. He could do all these different things. He could make fish multiply. He could do all these different things. But did they really want to hear that they were wrong? Of course they didn't want to hear that. That's why they crucified him. He wanted, people were like, who are you to tell us that we're wrong? We've been, the, the priests were like, we've been studying the, the scrolls. We've been doing this. We, we've listened to the prophets. You know, the Roman Empire, it's like, who is this guy? He doesn't know nothing about us. Oh, yeah, he does. Because he actually was there when you're, he actually was there before your, your world was even created. He was there when Sodom and Gomorrah got just jacked up. He was there when the flood came. He was there when Cain killed Abel. But yet, people want to sit there and say, well, wars have been going on and wars have been, we've been fighting wars and we've been dealing with this for years. That's the problem. Because who are, who has the one that has got us doing that? It's not God. So if you come to the realization and understand as you open your eyes that God didn't tell anybody to kill anybody the way that we kill each other, God never told Cain to kill Abel. But yet we have religions out there that are saying it's okay to do that. People realize that when God actually had people killed, it's because they disrespected him after all of the things that he, not to mention, he created us. So he had the right to tell them pe those people, go and take care of that. Because I brought them, I said, I did all of these uh, miracles out of Egypt and they're going to sit there and worship Baal but you know who Baal is Satan so of course he got angry about that and said kill them because I am the only God they're supposed to be worshipping put that into perspective when you keep thinking about how we interact in this country and I say it's when we say it's okay to have freedom of religion and you'll see what, how, how jealous our God really is to the full of us who know better now if you take that into perspective the same law that was freedom of religion and this is going to take us into who Mystery Babylon really is. And this is going to take us into why 
we're, we're, we're in big trouble. The only nation that ever allowed the same type of religious freedom that we enjoy in the United States that ever existed was Nimrod Babylon. Because his mother slash wife allowed everyone to worship whomever God they pleased. But where do, where did these gods come from? Now I'm going to get into why we're being deceived by Satan. All right. Now, people are going to sit there and say, well, this isn't biblical. This isn't this. This isn't that. But that, people don't understand that God says in the scripture, you ask and you shall receive. The, you knock and the door shall be open. Okay, I've asked God for several years. People keep seeing these UFOs. People keep seeing these things. People keep talking about supernatural beings. People keep talking about billions of years. People keep talking about science. And, and this is going to get into why people believe in science the way they do. You know, and I said, you know, the scripture, you are God. Tell me, please. How did this come to pass that people keep thinking of this? Now, one of the things I want to get clear, just like human beings, we have the freedom, God's creation, the angels have a choice too. And we know this because one of them defied God. And you know what his name is. Okay? And for those of you, you all want to call him Lucifer, that's not his real name. That was a name that was interpreted by the Greeks. Uh, and, the, and the Roman Empire through Latin, God gives all his archangels the L. That's right. You know, people would talk about Superman. Superman was, was uh, everything was Kal-El and Jor-El. And uh, where, where do you think that concept, and these are superhuman beings to us on earth. Where do you think that concept came from? Because all the angels that were considered powerful in God's kingdom are end with L. This is why, in my opinion, Many of the Supermans got cursed after this, after they made that series, because they were mimicking God. In my opinion, when they keep calling people Jor-El and Kal-El and, and, and all these different names that end with L, I said, well, yeah, that's God's angels. They end with L. And so God took offense. I think God really took offense to that. So, um, Hallel, which is the interpretation that becomes Lucifer in, in, in because Hallel means the giver of light in Hebrew. He's a light, he's a light giver. Okay. Became Asatana, which means the enemy, the defiled one, when he was cast out, the son of perdition, prince of darkness, all those names you want to call him, uh, when he was cast out, you know, became, it's, it's really the, the beginning of what took place and why we are where we are today. So remember this 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 took place. We can talk about when did this war take place with heaven and the angels fell. I said, well, first of all, in order for Adam and uh, Grandpa Adam and Grandma E to be deceived, Satan had to have already fallen. So I hear people telling me the war just the war is not that old. Oh, the war took place in new in the New Testament. The war took. Okay, you can't deceive Grandpa Adam and Grandma and Eve without an evil entity present. The serpent can't go in there, which is why snakes and the dinosaurs or whatever you want to call them are not in God's sight anymore because of this. That that creation fell. You know, one of the things that science talks about, well, we found dinosaurs that looked like they used to be snakes. Well, in the scripture, it validates why they're on their stomach. But you talk about the evolution. He said, I cursed them to call on their belly. Well, that's what happened. Those snakes lost their leg. But you can't see that. Oh, well, it was a change. It was an instantaneous change. Well, I'll tell you what. When you like, when you, when you, when you see how big and powerful God is, make, make sure you let him know that he can't do things instantaneously because he does it all the time. 
even doctors are baffled by what God does instantaneously these days. As he said, in these times, I would perform miracles beyond your belief. You know, you got people that should be dying in car crashes that, like, uh, I'm case in point, that are walking away with no scratch. And you're looking at that car like, there's no way you should have walked out of that car. Really? How did that happen? That you, you, that car, that defied every scientific book, uh, law in the book. How did this happen? How did that happen? How could that have happened? And they sit there and they say, you just got, you just got lucky. No, no, I got Jesus. That's what happened. Jesus said it wasn't your time yet, so you got out of there. And it wasn't your time to suffer through any type of bodily injury, so I saved you. That's what it was. Okay. Um... And let's get back to the whole concept of the deceiver. People always think that Satan is what they see on Hollywood because the whole, these people don't realize that Satan is Hollywood. So he's going to mislead you in who he really is so that he can continue to work in your life the way he wants. So if you think you think you if you think that Satan is one way because they show it on the movies, or you think that Satan's a, a this way because they show it in, in, in film, people don't understand. That's all designed to mislead you in what other things he can do. Because if you think, well, that's the only way that Satan, you know, you would say if Satan can't walk in the church. Really? You know how many preachers that Satan has been? In the pulpit, preaching the word of God, while all along misleading the flock, you have no idea how many times Satan is. I mean, he has been mimicking Jesus Christ since the day Jesus Christ was crucified. So this whole thing about when Satan won't come into the church, oh yeah, when you start sitting there crossing your arms when the preacher's preaching, not listening to what he's saying, like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who you think's doing that? Okay. The next thing is our history can be distorted to where we think it's just information. Why do you think schools teach science and history the way they do? Why do you think people are meant to make it, make it look like, oh, it's just to help you get an education? To help you get a better job, to help you have a career, to have you this. How do you think all of that got set up? You know, for those of you out there, this is for the bankers. This is for the credit union people. This is for all the people that work with money. Everybody knows that the first bank was not created in Israel. So then, if it wasn't created in Israel, then what country created the first bank? And who was really in charge of that country? Because so many civilizations want to believe that God is in charge of their country, that God is in, that God is the one who created that whole system. <laughs> and God's looking at you like, I. You you guys are doing things that you think I'm I'm just allowing it because you have free will and I'm working in to try to help people manipulate those that are misusing it but you don't realize a lot of the things that you're doing I'm not okay with for example the banking system was started in Babylon by Nimrod. Now, just to kind of give you that idea, idea, and see, people seem to forget, okay, that our Creator, you know, a lot of things happen in our lives. That we still stop and think that, oh yeah, it's, 
it's Satan, it's Satan, it's this, it's that, it's the other. Oh, it's God, it's this, oh, it's God, it's that. But we don't really know the truth. And of course, as Satan, he's going to attack anyone and everybody that's going to try to uh, manipulate what he's really been doing. And so, what we fail to understand is, God never invented this concept of buying and selling. Because he said, I am a giver. And you're a receiver. As long as you also give what you owe to me. Okay, did you ever see any prophet tell God's followers that you need to go and get gold to hand it to God? When you sacrifice for your sins? No. You offer your your, your food and all God cared all God cared about was the food that he provided and the animal it was animal animal or plant. This is the reason why when Jesus Christ went in the synagogue he got tipped off. Because they were treating the synagogue like a bank. He said, This is my father's house and it's a house of prayer. Not a den of thieves. Because I can tell you right now, any bank in this world that if Jesus Christ would have walked into, he would say the same thing. This is the den of thieves. Because they take your money when you can't. When what happens when you get loans? They know you can. They pay. They pay you back. You go. You have to make. They got to make money off of you somehow. Does God ever charge you interest? No. Does God ever come up with the concept that you need to be broke to own something? No. Now he did say to the Jews, when you have, I mean, you're going to have people, when you put people in debt, you need to forgive those debts seven years. Okay? But see, here's the thing that Christ tried to say. If you would not lay up the things in, on this earth, you wouldn't be in debt. Your treasure is supposed to be in heaven. Okay, Adam and Eve weren't in debt. Grandpa Adam, Grandma Eve. No wasn't in debt. Why is that? Because you have people that had to see themselves as wealthy and poor. Well, let's talk about that. Who does God care about the most on this planet? He says it all the time in the Bible. The poor. Because he knows it's the wealthy that created the position that they're in. That's why he said to open up your fields for one year. To let them come in and eat. Because he knows that you wealthy people are the ones that made it to where they couldn't afford to eat anymore. And if he, that's why when he disobeyed him, he was really ticked off. You know, there's a reason why Christ said, take your weapons of war and turn them into, into weapons of, 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 of planning and, and cultivating. Because we, as, as nations, what is the one thing that we spend so much money on? And, and you know, the United States is the biggest culprit. Defense. And, and you know, the, the one thing, and this is where I say how we can be so deceived by Satan by our leadership you know we have been told since 1776 we're fighting for freedom we're fighting from tyranny well here's the thing who after the 1900s what country What person in our actual area was challenging that? Once we had established the dominance of who we were. Nobody. So who are we fighting for freedom from? 
Once America has established themselves as the dominant force in the world, no one was challenging us. The historians will have you sit there and say, oh, it was the Germans, oh, it was this, oh, it was that. Let me explain something to you. A lot of the chaos around the world, and this is what I try to tell you, where you can be deceived, was created because of our interactions with those people. Because our government told our businessmen, you, we, we got to make money. So go into these nations and trade. Well, does everybody like what we stand for? No. And, do, and does every businessman that ever goes into these nations ever do the right thing? No. They basically turn a lot of this countries around us into our personal banks. They feed us. And that's where the conflict comes in. They get tired of it. Wait a minute. We're tired of you getting all the big dollars and we're getting the little the little dollars. Why do you think all these countries that are our allies are sitting there like why why don't we why why do you sit there and look at their economies and it's like why are their economies so poor? But yet we're their ally. There's a reason for that. Now, do you honestly sit there and want to sit there and think, oh, well, God, that's a, that's a plan that God had for, for humanity. Really? Did he, did he tell you to go and steal? Because that, technically, that's what you're doing. When you go to other countries and you don't tell them what you're really paying for, but the whole truth of the concept, and that's why I say, you know, you want to talk about what, when it talks about in the book of Revelations, what is the wine that everybody's drunk on? Democracy. Capitalism. Hello. Everybody wants to say, oh, it's oil, it's this, it's that. Let me explain something to you. America's right to purchase is its strength. To go out and buy and sell. Like what Jesus got upset about when he went to the synagogue. Like what so many nations that came before us always fought over. The right to own property. The right to have wealth. Okay. So when you look at all the systems of government that are in place around the world. Do you honestly think that those were strategically set up by God? He allowed nations to rise because he wanted to punish Israel when they were when they when they would disobey him. But who established those systems to begin with? What gods were they worshiping? They weren't worshiping Yahweh, which is the Jews what he called Jehovah. They were worshiping Satan and his followers. You know, everybody talks about Zeus. And the, we talk about, oh, the, the Greek gods and da, da, da. The lightning bolt comes from Hallel, the light bringer. That was his name. Ra. Why do you think so many cultures around this world worship the sun? Or worship the moon, the concept of the light. Who do you think that came from? Why do you think we have zodiacs and, and all these other things that we go by? Who do you think's idea idea was that? All God told us is that the, the moon, the, the 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 sky is going to show signs, and and, and it's going to show when it, when the times come, when the time comes. But I didn't tell you to worship that. But our civilizations did. Because who wanted to be God? Satan. 
He wanted to place himself up high, on a pedestal. Worship me. I'm God. And it's gone so far as to, as to deceive people to even entertain his followers. Which is what I'm going to get into in the next part of this with the UFO thing. Alright, so in the days of Noah, we worship many God, gods. It actually says in the book of Genesis, and of course, one of the things that it always frustrates me when you hear the Catholic Church, they talk about the Bible. But yet they'll sit there and tell you, well, we've never seen any proof that angels had children. And I'm sitting there like, okay, so then why does it say so? When you read, wait, hold on one second, let me get to that. Let me move this thing around because I know it's going to be acting crazy here in a minute. Apologize. So we talked about Adam descendants down to Noah. We're in the book of Genesis 5. And we're going to get to the portion where it actually talks about my, my, my I'm sorry, this is Genesis 6, I'm sorry. Now, it's and, and this is the thing. Now, here's what we, we got to understand. We had the we had Satan fall to the Garden of Eden, and his followers. Because remember, when he got kicked out, he had people going with him. That was one set of angels. Now, this is after. Okay, where it says we be, man, uh, Genesis six one. The man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God. No, it says the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? Are angels considered like him to be the sons of God? They're created in the same facet that Jesus was created as as a as a as a, as a, as a called into being. Okay, the sons of God saw that daughters of man of a man of man were attractive, and they took these as their wives and their children. The Lord said, "My spirit shall not abide in any man forever, for he is flesh; his days shall be one hundred twenty years." The Nephilim were on earth in those days, and also afterward, the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children unto them. These were the mighty men who were of the old and the men of renown. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great. So what you're, what you're noticing here is you have these, now think about it. You have these angels now whose responsibility was overseeing Humankind. They were over. They were just, their their responsibility was to oversee the earth and what was going on. Remember, it talks about. You remember, you know, the knowledge of that time was very high. That's why it says it's like the days of Noah when it comes again. Well, who did that knowledge come from? Well, they had to be taught. And this is going to get into the, your UFOs and everything that people talk about that. Okay. So you have these sons of God. And we know angels can fly. Okay. But here's the thing. They had offspring with men. What's the problem with men at this time in Genesis? The problem is we were wicked because we were what? We were descendants of Genesis. Okay. I'm sorry. We were descendants of. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm a little tired here. We were descendants of, of our Grandpa Adam and Grandma Eve, and we were we were sinful. We were sinful nature. We had fallen. So you take this angel. Now think of. Now stop and think about this. This is not something that God was okay with, and this is why when you when you see that movie Noah, 
they call him the Watcher, and, and this is where Hollywood gets everything kind of distorted. This is what they got kicked out of heaven. This is another set of angels got kicked out of heaven for. Them. Because they were not supposed to do this. Okay? That's why God says, My spirit should not abide in man forever. Why do you think he why why do you think he put this curse on us for 120 days? Because we're doing things we're not supposed to be doing by allowing these angels these women who allowed these angels to come in and have and, 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 and be with them was an abomination to the Lord. That's why this curse came upon us of the 120 years. He's like, hey, this isn't this isn't what this is not good with me. I didn't want y'all doing that. Because look what happened. The Nephilim were on the earth. And in those days, and also after, when the sons of men came to dogs of men and they bore children to them, these were mighty men who were the who were of old, of men of re who men who were of old, the men of renown. What does he mean by that? They were extremely knowledgeable, wisdom. They were, it was like talking to a full-grown adult that has all kind of knowledge. They know things that you don't know. Okay, they can't. And they, when they were born, they weren't little children. They were grown men when they come out. Well, this is why when when you're when you're descendants of Cain and you don't know God, guess what? These must be our gods. Okay? So we get we become manipulated. These become our gods. We think that these people are are are, are created. We, this must be our gods. Because they don't know remember God, they don't know God. Because God is not talking to the descendants of Cain. Okay, and this is what these people know. If God is not talking to them, so we can do what? Manipulate. So basically, the gods that started to be brought. And remember now, after the, the flood, it talks about how the spirit still existed after God destroyed these people. I'm gonna get to the flying saucer part now here in a minute. Remember. The sons of man, the sons of God, are angels. So they know God. So when God was going to bring the curse upon the earth to destroy it with the flood, okay, they said, oh, we got kids down there. Okay? So all the while, that's why God had to make the flood a, a mystery when it was going to show up. Because these jokers were trying, well, these jokers were saying, hey, God coming, man, we, we got to get out of here. Because think, of, think about it is, you know, these, these, their parents are angels. They knew how to give, they had, they gave them the technology to fly like them. Because they said, hey, well, I can't, I'm, I'm, a, I'm half angel and I'm a half man, but I can't fly. Oh, the father said, well, we, Teach you how to do that. Remember the angels, these angels, these very same angels he's talking about, taught us to create the cities, taught us the technology, the knowledge that made us wicked. Now, how does that coincide to today? Look at exactly what's happening. And of course, the scientists are going to sit there and say, well, we've never found proof of this. Well, you know why? Because the spaceships are still off the planet. They didn't leave them here. They, they, not, they got one. Roswell got shot down. That was one of the things that, you know, the reason why that took a crash is because God didn't want us doing this mess. And he knew with them coming in, bringing their spaceships back, that that was going to make that knowledge increase to where we could now bring airplanes to the, to the positions where they are now. And so now the CIA and the, and the military and everybody's like, oh, we got, there is no God. We got these, because this is, a, this is, they come in there telling, telling these, these military people, dude, we're your gods. That Bible and stuff that you're talking about, that's us. 
We're the ones that created those civilizations. There's no Jesus Christ. There's no God. This is us. Guess what? Who do you think told them to, to start that mess? Because remember, no one is no one has been following the angels is above Satan. No one can defeat Satan but God, Jesus Christ, and the angels, because the rest of them have to follow Satan. So who do you think came up with that brilliant idea? Yeah, don't tell them that you you're the God. That's the even the old that's even the Old Testament. You created all that stuff. That you that's us. We did all that. So now everybody's like, ooh, maybe the Bible's wrong. Question it. These guys are saying that there's no God. We, that they're the gods. Really? Isn't that what they were doing in the days of Noah? Oh, there's no God. We're your gods. Where do you think all these names came from? Where do you think, um, what do you think the, the knowledge increasing part is about? It's kind of funny. That for thousands of years, people just kind of humdrum their way into building things. All of a sudden now, whoosh, technology's out of the box. What? Where did all this come from? They did the same thing in the days of Noah. They were walking around. They didn't know what to do. They were living in, in, in nomad nomadic herds. A group, sorry, not her. They were just using the sticks and the stones, drawn on the cave, just like they keep talking about. Ooh, these guys came along and told them how to build cities. We know this because now archaeologists find things that are over 10,000 years old. They now say, well, Egypt might be older than we think. Well, guess what? People, Egypt was a man who was a descendant of Ham who got angry at his father Noah about the curse of Canaan. He also was the uncle of Nimrod who was also the son of Cush who happened to be Egypt's brother who was Canaan's brother. Wow, you see? Hello? Open your eyes, people. We are here at this point in time in humanity because we have been deceived. We're fighting wars and we're competing for resources because of, of, of this demonic crazy, power-hungry creature named Satan is getting a big kick out of it all because I'm getting your soul. Y'all coming to me after this. Because Jesus came. Oh yeah, he told you all that stuff. But guess what? Ha ha! I got you. Because you're misusing what he told you. He never said that was okay. He never said that was okay. I am the one that convinced you that was okay, is what he's saying. I'm the one that said, oh, oh, that, that music doesn't matter. I'm the one that said, oh, you, you can go and, and build mansions. That's okay. And what did Christ say? Lay not your treasures on earth that rust can destroy or the thief can come and steal, but lay your treasures up in heaven. Why do you think he said that? Because who's going to send the thieves to steal and destroy? Satan. Why do you need to have guns to protect your property? Why do you think you have to buy weapons? 
Why do you think you have to create military forces to defend against the invaders? To protect your way of life. Oh, those Muslims are evil. Well, the, hello, the book of Ishmael told you that. No, the book of Genesis told you that. So forgive me. Forgive me. So, sorry about that. The book of Genesis said that. Ishmael's sons were going to be like a wild ass. They all carrying swords out there, just like they said it would. To go up against any nation that does not believe that Allah is God. Okay, <laughs> let me t explain something to you. Just like Satan can convince the Egyptians that Ra was their god and that the Jews that they had enslaved were inferior he could convince you that there's sex in heaven no there is not there is no purpose for it you have the creator whose kingdom is already made I don't need any more people up here. I put you down there. I can make more if I want to. Why do I need you to have sex? Wake up, people. He, he called it into being. He said, this is my world. You think he, he, he took the dust and made human beings. You think he gotta hit you? You gotta have sex? Let me explain something to you about the be fruitful and multiply. He already knew that the lust, that the lust was in us. That's why he made rules on how the lust was supposed to be governed. Be fruitful and multiply, but guess what? You better be married. Be fruitful and multiply, but have some common sense. You know, obviously, if he liked cities, he wouldn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and he wouldn't have knocked down the Tower of Babel. But yet, oh, we're building all these great cities, all these great skyscrapers. Oh, yeah, like if God likes skyscrapers, he wouldn't have knocked down the Tower of Babel. He wouldn't have let the planes run into the World Trade Center. Because remember, okay, God could have stopped that. If he could part the Red Sea to let the Jews walk across, if he could send Joshua into the battle of Jericho and make the walls tumble down with a trumpet blast, If, a, if Jonah could be swallowed by the Leviathan or whatever the whale it was, they didn't spit him out in three days. If he could get killed on the cross and then rise up three days later like he was like nothing, he could have stopped two planes from going into a building. So what makes, but what do you think? You don't understand the deception that is continuing to happen to us, people. I'm, t I'm giving you this message because God does not want to destroy this planet the way you, th that He is going to. He wants to. He wants to give us the opportunity to come in here and repent, seek His face, and learn who He is, and quit listening to the to the doggone devil. Who has people building mansions and, and wealth and, and doing all kinds of nastiness in their homes and, and thinking that, oh, we are the elite. We are the top. Okay, you remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar? God made him eat grass like a cow. And he was the biggest, he was the king of the most powerful nation on the world of the time. So all these politicians and presidents and, and kings and all these people that think 
that they so big and bad, you don't think that he can make you eat grass too? That's what a lot of people fail to understand. You're going to keep sending all these people around the world telling them you're defending for freedom, you're keeping us safe, sacrifice your life. Who said we weren't free in the first place? Did not Christ already said, I came to die that you might be free? Who's the one that told you you were locked up and didn't have freedom? Satan did. He's the one that's out there telling people you got to fight for your freedom. Wait, but God's like, but I already made you free on the cross. What are you talking about? What do you need to fight for? Jesus already did it. But yet you got these people. What did, what did, what did, John, what did Christ tell Peter? When they came to arrest him and he took a sword, he said, he got ready to cut off the ear of the, he cut off the ear of the Roman guard. Peter! He who lives by the sword, dies by the sword. You want to know why so many people today are dying in America with gun violence? You want to know today why so many people are being shot? Police officers, gangbangers, children, grown people, adults in this country? Because of the Second Amendment, we have the right to bear arms. And people, and, that's, and the thing that's so foolish is that here again is a play on words that the devil can use against people. Ha <laughs> ha! Fooled you! You don't even know what that even meant when they wrote that. But you're running around here with guns everywhere. <laughs> That's not what they meant when they wrote that. The king of England was coming into everybody's home and seizing weapons when they wanted control of their colonists. So they didn't have an uprising. They didn't want a rebellion against the king. So they took the guns. Or if the soldiers came into their house to be quartered, they said, oh, those, the red coats need your gun. Thank you. That is the second amendment, people. It wasn't put there to say they go out and shoot people with your gun because you want the right to defend your freedom. Learn your history. Not only that, learn about Jesus because he said, he who lives by the sword, dies by the sword. Why do you think all these Muslims out here cut me or white people say, oh the Muslims, they're killing other Muslims. Well yeah, because they're they're killing it because what it says. They're living by the sword, so now they're dying by the sword. That's why they're dying. That's why they're killing more Muslims than anybody else, even though they're killing Christians. We live in a society that is out of control because we have been deceived by the very people who we think we can trust. Because just like Jesus, Satan told Jesus, this is all my kingdom. That has not changed just because but why do you think Jesus told Pilate if this was my kingdom okay when he told Pilate that if this was my kingdom you could not lock me up You couldn't hold me. You wouldn't even be allowed to do this. Because whose kingdom was this? Satan. And who does Satan still have to listen to? Jesus. 
for all you worshipers out there that want to say Satan is God? Really? Really? Then why is it that when he went into the to the boy that was possessed, Satan, leave! And he left. Oh, but he's more powerful than God? He has all of this knowledge and, and, and belief, but yet he had to obey Jesus. Now, who's the bigger fool, the people? The people that let Satan deceive them, like myself, because I'm guilty. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm not guilty, because I know I am guilty. I have fallen for his foolishness in my life. That's why I'm confessing this to everybody. I am guilty of sins against God. That I, I mean, you know, lust. Praise God I didn't get any hooked on drugs like my mother did, my real mother did. But I've seen others that have. Why do you think they want people brain dead, hooked on drugs, drunk on alcohol, looking at pornography? Because guess what? Then you don't get to see what's really going on. Listening to rap music that's, that's derogatory. List oh, talking about who your favorite singers are. Asking, are we alone out there? Are those UFOs for real? Why do you think Satan is doing that? Because then you can't see what's really happening. Oh, I'm really in charge. I got 99% of you on the hook. Even the Jews themselves. <laughs> he didn't come yet. <laughs> He's laughing at all of you guys. That think that Jesus Christ didn't come yet. He's having a big old laugh. Shoal is sitting there. You got to call him Shoal. Oh, you call Mary a whore? <laughs> Look at you. You don't even know. You call Jesus an evil person? Ha! <laughs> he kicked my butt. But guess what? You don't know that. Because I got you. People, we need to wake up. You don't understand. The devil is real. He controls more than you know. He is going to get so many of us burnt to death for an eternity. You, you know, people talk about, oh, I can kill anybody I want if I want to. One time, you know how many times God can kill you? When you go to hell and you're in an eternal fire, and you're burning, you are dying every single day that you're in there. Because your soul is continuously feeling, the doctors say, oh, it's physically impossible for the body to feel pain after you're dead. Oh, but the soul can feel pain for an eternity. That's the part they don't know about. That's the part they can't see. Because, oh, well, like scientists, oh, we can't see it, so we it's not real. Really? It's the things that you can't... Okay, so uh, when the Black Plague showed up, you couldn't see it. Oh, but it was very real. When AIDS showed up, could you see it? Oh, no. But it was killing people. Hepatitis, all these different things that you cannot see. Why are people falling over like that? 
Why are they going blind? Why are people having all these things happening to them? Gonorrhea, syphilis. Didn't even know what it was until the, the, they came over. <laughs> the Native Americans said, oh, yes, we got, we, we're immune to that thing because we've been here for thousands of years. It don't affect us like it affects y'all. Oh, but you couldn't see it, but it still got you. That is Satan, people. You may not be able to see him unless he chooses to show you him, but he is there. And he is going to do everything in his power to make you burn. Even convince you, like the scripture says, Woe unto those who see good as evil and evil as good. Because he hasn't changed. What he said was evil is still evil. Doesn't matter what we say. Period. So you can go and try to justify it. You can let the priests in the Catholic church, they want to tell you whatever. Oh, we, we got to tolerate this. Jesus Christ is about love, but what, what did he say? Rebuke those that do not repent. Forgive those that do. That is in there, people. Now, of course, I can't, I can't find a scripture, but if y'all got to just Google it. But it says... If they, if, if, they, if the sinner does not repent, rebuke them, rebuke them. You can still love them, but you don't sit down and break bread all the time with them all the time, like you think it's okay. Rebuke them. Remember, when Israel got destroyed, they were allowing all kinds of religions and belief systems and everything come right in. Oh yes, come right on in. You can be here with us. And I was like, oh, really? What did he tell Solomon? Do not marry that woman because she believes in Baal. Who is Baal? We already know what happened in the, with Moses. That is why Israel split in two with evil Jews and, good, and, the, and the good Jews that brought on Jesus Christ. The evildoers and the good doers. Because of Solomon's mistake. Why did David's son, wait, why did David's son die? But he was the chosen king of God himself. Please don't kill my son. But look what you did. You can't, you can't take his, another man's wife and put him to die and think that that's okay? People, if God made the Jews eat vegetables grown from their own feces do you think that he's going to tolerate what we're doing in this country and say oh it's okay because they worship idols he allowed an entire military force waltz right into Israel and take them captive Burned the whole city to the ground because they were idol worshiping, because they accept the concept that you can have different gods. Uh uh. Yeah, if people, God gives you the freedom to worship who you want to worship. I know in this country it's the same way, but guess what? You're going to pay the price. You better believe it. And it doesn't even have to be a, 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 a God's name. It could be your, your wife, your husband, your children, your job, any of that stuff you worship. The singer on TV, you watch all these shows. Any of that stuff that you focus on can cause you to fall. I am telling you this because I have lived through it. I have been in a position 
where I have been humbled by the Lord so many times because I continue to not see what the devil's trying to do. He wants to separate you from the Father permanently because when you leave this earth and you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, his son, and you do not know the Father, you will never know the Father. And he will make the, and that is what hell really is, is separation from God, never knowing God. That is what the people of Cain had to go through on this earth before the flood, before Noah built the, built the ark. They went through an eternity, they went through all those generations of children, never knowing who God was. He, they were separated from him, that they allowed themselves to be um, confused by these so-called deities that say they were God. And we're doing it again. We're giving them the power. Oh, because they can burn our skin. Oh yeah, God can burn your skin for God can burn your soul. Forget about your skin. Oh, because they can break us in two. Oh, that God can break you in more than two. People, His throne is bigger than the earth. And you want to listen to these false gods out there? Telling you foolishness? I'm telling you, man. I'm doing this because I care about humanity. Because billions of people are about to lose their lives. If we don't change this. Then I'm praying for us. That God will change his mind. Because at this point, the, 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 the ball has already been set in motion. We're done. That son is going to cook us. Why do you think Obama told NASA? And you don't think he's not part of this whole thing? Watch that son. Why does he know that? Hmm. How does he know that? Maybe because Satan knows what God intends to do. Watch that son. Really? Watch those celestial things coming into our atmosphere. We need to know when it's going to hit. Because Satan knows when all this stuff happens, guess where he's going? He's going to be bound and put into the eternal fire. And he is not wanting to do that. So he has everybody out there. Oh, let me know when it's happening. When it shows up. Hook me up. Let me know. All my followers. Tell me when Jesus get here. Because he doesn't want to get bound. And he knows his time is short. He knows it's going to happen. And you can say, but I'm taking all y'all with me. Billions of people going to be with me in the fire. Is what he's saying. God bless you. May Jesus keep you. Please turn to Christ. He is the only way. Period. And he means it. He didn't come down here to tell us all of this stuff just to let himself blow smoke. He didn't come down here and put himself through all of that pain to see people go to hell. That's not what he wanted. God does not enjoy separating himself from his creation. God bless.